Brothers, this is the grave. This is the place that is home to every single person. This right here, you're gonna spend more time in this than you spend outside it. You're gonna spend more time inside this hole than you spend outside it. We come to the funerals and we're too busy thinking about the person that we, that we just buried, buried. But you have to understand this experience is not about him anymore. We buried him now. Now what you take from the grave is what you take for yourself. Now what you go back with. Brothers, you have to take something back for yourself. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that when a person gets put in a grave, three things they follow him. They come with the body, three things. Two of them go back, only one stays. The two things that go back, his family. It came with the body, it goes back. And the money, his wealth, that he spent his whole life working, it goes with him and then it goes back. And what is the nature of this family and this money? If you have a wife, or you have a girl, brother, after you're dead and buried, she's gonna go off with another man. No matter how righteous she is She's going to go get remarried Or she's going to find herself a new guy She's going to say I love you to him That's going to be her new man And you spend your whole life chasing after her Getting the money so you can buy things for her Your kids, if you leave kids, kids behind Your kids are going to look to another man And they're going to refer to another man as dad Your money, if it goes back that you spend your whole life working for Brothers, you know what's going to happen with that money? Your family's going to start fighting over themselves for your inheritance Give me my share, give me my portion Furthermore, when a person's buried It's not even a week or two And what happens? The family starts selling their things on Why? To pay for the rent, to pay for the bills Your prized possessions that you work so hard for Your, your family will sell it on So why is it that you work so hard for this life? None of it goes with you You know the only thing that goes with you? Because some of you are going to say But didn't Allah say? Like, do, not, do not forget your nasib, Your portion from this dunya Yeah Allah did say that But what did a scholar say that means? What's your portion of this life? Your portion of this life my brothers Is the white sheet that you're going to be put in your grave with You just saw the white sheet that we buried our brother with May Allah have mercy on him you just saw that white sheet That's the only thing From everything that you own That's going to come in the grave with you <coughs> Have you got enough for that white sheet? It's not as simple as just Having a £10 and a side to Buy a white sheet when you die Is your money halal? What did you make your money from brothers? Because if that sheet Is bought from haram money Drug money Fraud money Selling madness Brothers That's going to go in your grave with you When the angels come to visit you in your grave Is that what you're going to be wrapped around in A white sheet that was made From haram Furthermore brothers That white sheet What else do we know about it The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Hadith, hadith is in Sunan al -Tirmidhi. The Prophet said He said beautify your shrouding You know that art you, the Beautify your shroud Pay attention The Prophet said Beautify your shroud Shroud is a white sheet, right? Beautify it What does that mean? What does that mean? That means That when you're buried You should request in your will That they shroud you In the item that you used to do the most acts of worship in The item that you would go And you would seek knowledge in Have a nice white thobe That you have Some of the ones that you men are wearing right now This white thobe have one that you worship Allah with You go to the masjid in Jum'ah with that white thobe you, to, you go to the Jama'ah with that white thobe You sit and read Quran in that white thobe That white thobe you memorize Quran from That white thobe you sought knowledge of hadith from That white thobe you stood in the last Last day of the night begging Allah forgive me for my sins The day when you meet me Let that be the one thing that you beautify brother That's your actions That's the only thing that goes inside your grave but we're too busy, what? Working for this world The crepes, the gums, the houses The girls All of this is treachery Do you want to know what the reality is? Do you want to know what the reality is? 
We're going to walk away in a bit, huh? He's going to hear. Brothers, this is serious. He's going to hear us walking away. The loneliness. The loneliness that he's about to feel. Allah will make him hear our last footsteps. He can't speak to us. We can't speak to him. And as we go, what's going to happen, brothers? Brothers, the grave is going to take him. The grave's going to take him straight away. Doesn't matter if you're righteous or not. There was a man called Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu. He was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that when he died, Allah's arsh, it shook. It shook. And Allah sent 70,000 angels to, to his grave, to his janazah, to his burial. 70,000 angels, because he was a righteous man. And the Prophet said, if there was anyone that was going to be safe of the grave when it takes them, it would be that man. But the grave even took him. So it's going to take all of us. And how will it take you, brothers? The ribs are going to go over one another. Your body's going to squeeze so tight. One of the narrations mentions that your brain, your heart, your organs are going to ooze and spill out of your nostrils as it squeezes in. Brothers, that's real. That's what's about to happen. Wallahi, brothers, a minute or two it's going to be you and me. A minute or two it's going to be you and me. And then what happens after that? The angels are going to come grab. Pick the guy up. Get up. And these angels don't come to play. You could be what? The most righteous sheikh. These angels, they're serious. They've got one job. They come to ask you three questions. Who is your Lord? Can you answer that question if you didn't worship, if you live as a slave? A Lord, Master, Rabb, Allah, right? But unless you were a slave, can you answer that? If that was the case, then we could find a couple Christians right now. Quickly tell them the answers to the questions where they get buried and they can answer. It doesn't work like that. You won't be allowed to say it. You won't be able to say it unless you lived as a slave to your Lord. When he asks you, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? You will not be able to answer. Your Lord was the penny and the pound. Some, the Prophet said, Abdul Dir, Dinar with Dirham, the slave of the coins. Some of us are slaves of money, that's what it is. Some of us are slaves to women. Some slaves to our desires. Ask yourself, brothers, who is your Lord? And if it's not Allah, make it Allah. Second question, what is your religion? What's your deen? What's that deen? Deen is your way of life. Brothers, what's your way of life? Do you live the life of the streets? Is that your code? Is that your life? Is that, is that, is, is that, is that your code of conduct? Is that your lifestyle? The ends, the roads. Because the roads and Islam are two different things. And you can't answer that my religion was Islam. My deen, my deen was Islam. You can't. Unless you lived as a Muslim today. Submission. But we submit to the roads. We submit to what? Our nafs, our desires. That's our religion, brothers. The last thing that you'll be asked, what? Who is your prophet? Who is your prophet? Brothers. Can you answer that unless you followed him? Brothers, wallahi, I should be able to look. Listen, these are not small things, wallahi. Because what's on the outer reflects what's on the inner. What's on the outer reflects what's on the inner. The heart and the body are connected like that. I should be able to look at your faces. Allah barak, your beautiful faces. Probably righteous, more righteous than me. But I should be able to see from your faces, brothers, that you love the messenger. Brothers, where are your beards? Where, where, where is your garments? Charles above the ankles. Why are we dressing like the kuffar? Do we love the kuffar more than the prophet? Because what's in your heart will be on your body. Can you dress like someone who insults your mom or dad? Can you speak like that person? Can you, call, can you be like a, a guy who's constantly insulting your mom and dad? No. Because you hate him. And that means that acting and imitating someone is a sign of love. So who do you love? If you love the messenger brothers, you follow him. Let me, let, let me see the sunnah on your faces. And when you talk to one another, Assalamu alaikum, my brother. You know? We out here, what? Muslims killing Muslims. Brothers, if the grave is not enough to make you wake up, Allah, I don't know what it is. We come to bury a body, man. Every time, every time I come to bury a body, man, there's people, what? And they're already talking about the dunya. Bro, there's people laughing and we're burying bodies out here, man. We ain't even burying granddads and grandmas. We're burying young brothers. And we're out here laughing. How are you laughing? 
at this moment in time? What's happening to your hearts? We're burying people. And we're laughing. Even look, 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 look. If you're smart, you would have observed something. The whole time, we went to, when we went to see our brother, Nord, may Allah have mercy on him, when we went to see his body, what are people saying? Where's the body? I can't even call him by his name anymore. Huh? He was Noor three days ago, four days ago when you were talking about him. Now that he's here, he, he's a body. Bring the body. Where's the body? Let me see the body. That's it. Furthermore, when you go see some of his family members, a week or two from now, you're going to be worried to even mention his name because you might upset someone. You might bring some feelings back. They might start remembering. Ah, oh, my son, my brother. So you can't, you, you, you're, you're, not, you're even going to be scared to mention his name. That's going to be me and you. The body. The body. Brothers, this is what it is. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الْكَيِّسُ مَنْ دَانَ نَفْسَهُ وَعَمِنَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ The smart one. The smart one. He's the one who looks at himself. He puts himself down. He tells himself, listen, you're a sinner. You're wrong. You keep messing up. Fix up. Fix up. And what does he do? And he starts to do actions. بعد الموت because it's going to benefit him after death. Well, the the stupid idiot, the idiot person is what? He follows his desires. He smoke. What he's he's d- doing haram, listening to music, linking girls, drugs, all sorts. He follows his desires and what? What tamanna? He starts to what? Desire, hope, what? From Allah, safety. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that, brothers. You have to wake up to this, brothers. You have to wake up to this. Fa'asabatkum, Allah said, it came to you, the calamity. What calamity? al maut death. This is a calamity. It is min masaib al azam the greatest calamity. You can't worship Allah after this. You can't pray no more. You beg and beg, send me back, Allah. Send me back. This time, I will pray just two more. No. You're not coming back. The Prophet وسلم, said, The two raka'ah that you pray before Fajr, it is more than the entire world. The one in the grave, all of these graves, they are dying. They are dying to come out and pray just two more raka'ah. And we're missing them out here. Brothers, the final thing I will say. It wouldn't be right for me to not give you practical advice. Number one, change your friends. Because the Prophet wasallam said, A man is in a religion of his best friend. Huh? Who are your friends? Because you and them are the same. Number two, start seeking knowledge. Brothers, start studying your deen. You know why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man mat, the one who dies, wa ya'lamu, and he has knowledge of la ilaha illallah, dakhal al jannah, he's going to go paradise. Brothers, some of us are grown men, huh? Puberty long gone. And we still don't know how to worship Allah the way He deserves to be worshipped. We still don't know Allah. We still don't, we still don't even know Him. If I ask you, Rab, what does that mean? You don't know. Today is the day where you need to make that change. Change your friends and start learning your deen. And right now, we're in East London. And late in inshallah ta'ala tonight, 7.30, we got a class for the brothers. We're going through the 99 names of Allah. Qadar Allahu ma sha fa'al. I planned this since three weeks ago. I didn't even know today, the day we bury our brother, 
May Allah have mercy on him. It's the same day tonight we're going to have class and the name of Allah that we're studying is the name Rab. The same one that you're asked about in the grave. I'm begging all of you be there. I'm begging, brothers, if you're real about this change, I'm begging you be there. And as you leave, as you leave, please, brothers, don't, rev- don't go back to the dunya laughing and joking straight away. Let, let, let the day carry on for a bit like this. And when the last person walks away and he can no longer hear his footsteps, at that time, brothers, if you love him, you, if you love him, make dua for him at that time. Because that's when the angels are going to come to him. When the last man leaves the grave and he can't hear his steps, the Prophet said, now your brother needs your dua. Make dua, Allah he keeps him strong. Because the angel, the grave, it shakes you. Brothers, the grave, it shakes you. Make sure he's strong. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah brothers and sisters So that video that you just saw right now That video was from our matin in the Masjid project This is a project that alhamdulillah has been running for a while now Most importantly with the permission of Allah And then of course with the donations that you guys have generously Generously been giving from your own pockets We've been doing tours up and down the country We've been doing classes around London We've been doing mentoring events so on and so forth And the videos are there for everyone to see Alhamdulillah we're very very clear with how this money is spent Where people mashallah have been Swarming the masjid, swarming the masjid, alhamdulillah. Now, in order for us to continue these events and classes and so on and so forth, we do need to continue with the fundraising. That's why we're asking you to help us out. You know, if we can raise the remainder of the funds that we need to raise within the next two weeks, that will sort us out very, very nicely to the end of the summer, inshallah ta'ala. Just to give you a little example of how effective the permission of Allah this, this program is, just at the last event, one of the brothers came into the masjid with drugs. He had drugs on him in his bag. And after the talk and after the event, came up to Brother Imran, he came up to one of the speakers and said to them, I've been drug dealing for a while. I've got drugs on me. What, what do I do with them? I really want to change. He ended up throwing the drugs away. And that's just one person. That's just one example. That's just one story. And there's so many more out there. So please, brothers and sisters, donate generously and help us help the youth and in turn help you. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.